On today's episode of Titus and Tate, we are not making Louisville jokes. No. It's, it's not happening. If not you're today. looking for Louisville jokes, you've come to the wrong place. Um, we, we are a pro-Louisville podcast. Yes. Uh, we Always get, have been. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we are now. Um, <laughs> and and we are not going to be dancing on their graves. We're not going to be twisting the knife. Um, but at the same time, Louisville stinks. And wow. it's sad, and I'm sad, and mm-hmm. oh my God. This is this is a cry. Uh, the the panic button is has never been hit harder. I have smashed it. It is one game into the Kenny Payne era, and one word: pain. Ugh, ugh. Um, it was supposed to be an uneventful start to the college basketball season, but the the wheels have already fallen <laughs> off for the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, Florida State, Central Florida, Oof. USC, Wolf, Georgetown won, but like still at the same time, did they? Um, in the words of my four year old niece, all of these teams are doo doo stinky pants. <laughs> right, right. Make that list. The diaper dandies have turned into doo doo stinky pants. The doo doo stinky pants, dude. Um, Arizona State throw them in there too. They yeah. they scrape by Tarleton. Uh, Belmont beats Ohio on a buzzer beater. That was fun. Um, Loyola needed OT to beat Fairleigh Dickinson. There's a lot to talk about. We're excited. Uh, we're we're bringing back good guy, bad guy, Kyle guy, B A G guy. Yeah, yeah. Are you Kyle saying guy. bad or bag? Bag. Okay. Um, yes. Cal's guy. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see where the segment goes from there. I don't know. We'll, we'll throw in some rest in peace, Ray guy. Uh, he, who, who <laughs> yeah, R. Hall of Famer. greatest punter of all time. Yeah, maybe we just like first round pick Al Davis back in the yeah, day. Yeah, maybe we just uh, pick a bullet point from the Ray guy Wikipedia. Honestly, remind everybody. I have some notes. <laughs> yeah. I have some notes on Ray guy. Uh, good guy, bad guy is back. We're gonna do that. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to do that. Uh, also, fraud power rankings. Today. Wow. Three days into the season, wow. we already have frauds. There's a lot of frauds. Frauds honestly. have emerged. I, I'm actually yeah. worried about the fraud power rankings because. There might be too many frauds. It's uh the fraud power rankings are, are one of my favorite segments, but uh what makes it great, Tate, is that it, the fraud power committee, the, the the fraud committee pulls no punches. Uh, no, we're three days into the season and they're already saying I, I've seen enough. Yeah, these these people and these teams are frauds. Yeah, tarnished so, legacy, yeah. <laughs> tarnished. <laughs> legacy tarnished. Uh, this is gonna be a fun show. I'm so excited. College basketball's back, and <laughs> so uh, back. We have so much to talk about. But first, Woody Durham. All right, Tate, let's uh let's start with uh, good guy, bad guy. Uh, we're bringing it back. This is exciting times on this program. Yeah, I'm very excited. For the for the listeners at home, if you're new here, if you're not a friend of the program, if you have not been listening since the teed-up days, you may not understand, you may not get the premise, but here it is simply. A good guy is someone that... I love that we do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be January for two. Well, and it's always a different definition, too, which is my favorite part. But in general... we're gonna It's going to be week 12 of us doing good guy, bad guy. Yes. And we're going to spend the first 15 minutes of, of course. the segment explaining we're what this is. Trying to get people up to speed. Always the best segments. I've always said the best segments in podcasting are one you have to explain for 15 minutes. Yes, over and over <laughs> until over. you hammer it home. Until you hammer it Go home. Go ahead. As you were... Good guy is what we're looking for here. And a good guy is someone that, you know, they make a lot of moves that, you know, from the outside looking in, we say it might not be quote unquote winning moves. And it might not be, you know, the moves that we respect at the highest level when it comes to the victors. Right. It's something that we have to respect because it's a good move. It's a good guy move. It's hashtag classy. It's classy. Yeah. And uh, when, when they lose and they leave, we say, man, disregard the record. Yeah. He's a good guy. There's, He's a good man. Sometimes it's more than just what happens on the court. Yes. There's, it's bigger than yeah, basketball. It's bigger than basketball, yeah. Way bigger. <laughs> yes. Tim Miles is the ultimate good guy. He, he, he will forever be the ultimate when good I, guy. When I close my eyes, I see Tim Miles and those glasses and him smiling at me, and I say, that's a good man. That's a good man right there. By the way, Nebraska, if they could hire, if they could snap their fingers and Tim Miles is the coach right now, and we can go back to the Tim Miles era when Nebraska was like, Baby, come back. Yeah. Yes. And, and Nebraska. When he's like, tripping. Yeah. And, and Nebraska, uh, whoever was in charge of firing him was like, This guy is 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 not the guy. We have to move on. Um, I bet they I bet they push that button. Would mm-hmm. you say? Yeah. I, I would push yeah, that button. I would push that button. I would go back. <laughs> but. I digress. Good guy, the first good guy of 2022 in the 2022 season. Now, if you watched basketball last night, you may have said to yourself, I'm watching Bellerman 
And, you know, I don't know why I'm watching Bellerman, but Bellerman is not dribbling the basketball. Wait, 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 wait. Is it Bellerman? Bellerman. It's not Bellerman. It's Bellerman. Okay. I believe. <laughs> that is what. That's what Didn't we talked about this last time when we talked about it. I'm, I'm going to say this. Wes Durham, my guy, is saying Bellerman, and I'm saying Bellerman because right. it's Goodman, Bagman, Lenore, and Bellerman. Lenore Ryan. Lenore Ryan. Bellerman. Like the Ryan of a, an orange or something like that, right? Oh. That's what they're saying. Okay. Beller, Bellerman and Lenore Ryan. Okay. Got it. Go ahead. Wes Durham, Bellerman. Bellerman. <laughs> 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 All right, so good guy. Here we go. Kenny Payne is the good guy, the first good guy of 2022. Okay. And I know a lot of people, when they hear the name Kenny Payne, what do they say, Mark Titus? They say, no, no, no. He's a bag man. How could yeah. a bag man be a good guy? And I look at you in your eyes and I say this. You either die a bad guy or you live long enough to see yourself become the good guy. And here we are where Kenny Payne, this is what he said. He has been preaching all preseason. It's not about the record. It's about what we learn. That is the, maybe, that should be like the thesis statement of a good guy. So Kenny Payne says, we don't care, throw the record out this year. Yeah. We're going to learn a lot of lessons, you know what I mean? And it's about the time that we have together. So he plays a team in their third year of D1 basketball, a crosstown rival in Louisville, Bellarmine. And Bellarmine comes in, and they have a coach, Scott Davenport, who obviously coached under Rick Pitino, coached under Denny Crum, is a Louisville guy. And he has his program. His program is built on passing the basketball. We're going to share the ball. No one's going to dribble. It's five guys that look like you and I passing the ball around, hitting jumpers, hitting step backs, and they're just running circles around Louisville. And I'm saying to myself, okay, so first Lenore Ryan comes in with uh -huh. one of Kenny Payne's former teammates, and he lets him beat him in an exhibition. I'm like, okay, very good guy move. Tip of the cap to your old teammate. And then Coach Davenport comes in. Shout out to Coach Davenport. Listen to the program. I reached out to him. Said good. I pulled a John Rostein. <laughs> it's like great win last night, Coach. Um, but he comes in. We need, to, we need to do that more often, by the way. Oh, it, to, I'm uh, all in. Yeah. I'm all in this year. I'm locked in. So Coach Davenport, he comes in there, and Kenny Payne says, "You know what? This Louisville man right here, look like looking at him, staring at him." He deserves a win for his program. I'm going to give it to him. Very good guy move. So two former Louisville guys come in. Kenny Payne gives them wins. He says, I want to boost your program. I want to elevate your program. Very good guy move. And uh, also post-game, Kenny Payne, this is the most good guy thing I've ever seen. He said, they deserve to win. They're a well-coached team. They out-coached us. They outplayed us. They were the aggressor. All good guy. I mean, yeah, the, the guy yeah. is hitting every single yeah. good guy term on the board. And then I look, and then I just type in on Twitter, you know, because sometimes you just got to check in. Kenny Payne, good guy. 200 tweets of <laughs> people serious? of people over the years dating back to 2010. Jeff Goodman in 2010 tweeted, Kenny Payne, really good guy. He's a good guy. This man <laughs> is a good guy. We thought he was a bad guy. We were wrong. Kenny Payne is the first he, good guy okay, of the year. This is, Kenny Payne will become a bad guy. When, uh, when Louisville is like one in twelve, mm. and he does a press conference where he's until these words come out of his mouth, um, I take full responsibility. Yes, but also, and then says but comma, mm -hmm. and then continues continues to, continues yes. to talk. When he does that, then he I think he's starting to transition into being a bag guy. Mm -hmm. But right now, you're absolutely right that he's just taking it on the chin. Uh, this start to the Kenny Pan era could not go any worse. It, it really couldn't. I mean, we, we, we don't need to beat that dead horse, but um, it's very, very bad. And the fact that he's, you know, not... He's taking pictures with Coach Davenport yeah, after the game, yeah. smiling, yeah. laughing. And then he's going to a press conference, and he's like, we got out coached, we got outplayed. And all of the Louisville media, they're saying... I thought you were a bag man. Yeah. Well, yeah who is this good guy? Yeah, what and bring bring us the bag man, please. I think the most good guy move of all is that he's he might be intentionally sinking the Louisville program. Yes. So Rick Pitino can come back. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. That that would be the only thing that would make sense to me. And last night, if you watched this game, I mean, there was a man. Shout out Garrett Tipton and shout out Bash. Tipton edits. I wish. Tipton? I wish. I wish. It must be Joe Tipton's Joe? cousin. <laughs> But Garrett Tipton, he has a great game, 12 points in the second half. And then Bash, a guy by the name of Bash Wheeland or Wyland, whatever one. Yeah. These are the two guys that that Bash Wyland? Bash Wyland. And, and I mean, Garrett Tipton? It's like a freaking law firm. You know Dude, what I mean? It's like suits. I, uh, and I'll, these two guys tear down Kenny Payne. I'll be Good honest. Guy. I didn't watch the game. I was on a plane back to L.A. Uh, I was following along it for you. on my phone. And... Um, it, it did not seem like it was going well for Louisville, obviously. It started out it was, great, by the way. Yeah. Louisville hit a couple threes to open the game, and I texted one of my ACC brethren, and I said, hey, 
Louisville's not that bad. They got some players. <laughs> They're, not that bad. They're not that bad. I'm like, Jalen Willers, he looks pretty good. L. Ellis looks pretty good. And then as the game wears on, I'm like, okay, I see. And they took more three point shots than they took shots inside the paint. Every time they drove, they got a layup. Because again, you know, they're playing Bellerman. But Chip, at the end of the day, at, they did. Look didn't up do how this. to say the school name. I think it's Bellerman. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I, I'm in my head about it now. Because Lenore Ryan and, and, who, who do you got? What's what's the handicap of that game? Lenore Ryan versus Bell. If, if they played each other, Ooh. <laughs> I think I think I'm taking Lenore Ryan points. Even though I like Bellerman and I like the way that they play, they do not dribble the basketball. That is like the that is the thesis statement of their offense. We got Bellarmine. Bellarmine, Bellarmine. We I swear to God, I'm having deja vu because I, I remember talking we, about. We've had we've, we've had, had this, this happen before. And I think like the official account, but the but Bellarmine Bellarmine they account they, tweeted us. No, they said, told us exactly what it was, but I've already forgotten. I've already forgotten. And it. then yeah. I watched last night in West Durham, who's my guy, son of Woody Durham. He was saying Bellarmine. He was on the call. He was on the call, and he was saying Bellarmine. 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 And that's what threw me off because I'm like, that's Wes. Yeah. You know. Well, all right, Bellarmine. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't matter though. The real story is Kenny Payne, good guy of the year, early, 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 out of the gate. Yeah, that's a good pick. I yeah. like that. Um, I'm, move, I'm, I'm letting. By the way, I'm going to say this uh, as we move forward this season. I'm going to let you be the good guy. I, we, I I want one pick. I want us to be uh, completely focused as a. Yeah. I I want I. In fact, we should like make graphics. I think every single week we just pick like one guy who is a good guy and a bad guy. Yeah. Um, and I think both of us having separate picks. It it, it it dilutes, dilutes the product. Yeah, it dilutes the product. Mm-hmm. We need one pick. I'm letting you be the guy. You're the you're the final. Yeah. You're the final say. So you're. you're I am Adam Smith guy. here. I'm the invisible hand yeah. of the of the guys. And first up, Kenny Payne. You are the I, good guy. But can, having said that, can I do a hat tip? Can I do a couple hat tips? These aren't the good guys. These <laughs> yeah. are just. I just wanted a hat tip. Yeah. Andy Enfield losing to Florida Gulf Coast. His former team. His former. You know. He was the runner up. Good guy yeah. of the week. Lucky. Lucky for him. Kenny Payne showed up last night. Uh, so I, I I wanted to throw that out there, and then also Hartford coach John Gallagher resigning mm-hmm. the day before the season starts as a protest to Hartford moving from D one to D three. That felt like a good guy move to me. So I want to I, I want to you know if you're a fan like if you're a John Gallagher fan and you listen to the show hoping to hear him be good guy of the week like yeah. we, we we you know he, he, there's an honorable mention we, yeah we, we talked about we tip our cap we tip our cap but yeah. at the same time Kenny Payne losing to Lenore Ryan and Bellarmine Bellarmine. Bellerman. I'm also seeing on Twitter people saying it's Bellerman. Cool, perfect. It's Adv- Bellerman. Advocates. I I, they get, I am they telling you, D1, it's Bellerman. Yeah. It's Bellerman. Bellerman feels right. Right? Because because I I remember like my instinct says Bellerman, mm-hmm. and and so as I play back the last time we did this, I probably said Bellerman a bunch. I think I said Bellerman as well. And that's what caused them to correct us to mm-hmm. Bellerman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't uh, imagine. know what I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> Pronunciation <laughs> dyslexia. Yeah. I will say last night throughout the game, Bellerman just felt right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to stick right. with Bellerman moving forward. Congrats to Bellerman, by the way. Big win. That's exciting. That's, that's a program. Got, I mean, that's, that's a program that's, win. It's a program win. That is that is the <laughs> definition of a program win. So congratulations to Bellerman. Uh, yeah. That that and and you said that they again. I didn't watch so, but but they don't pat, they don't dribble the ball. They just pat, they move around. Dude, the, that's they, a, their offense is twelve to fifteen passes. That's a situation I'm going to be monitoring all season. I, well, I'm, who else do they play? I got to look up their schedule. I got I got to watch them play more. I mean, they play like Eastern Kentucky and teams like this. But at the end of the day, Garrett Tipton. You know, we have wooden votes. We're very excited about this. He's on my watch list. Oh, I have. Put him on the board. You know, oh. and I'm not saying he's in the top ten. I'm not saying he's in the top five, but he's on the board. So Garrett Tipton, congratulations. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh bag guy of the week. Yeah, B A G guy. Now, this is someone that in the world of college basketball, back before NIL kids, there was a time that the FBI pointed out that maybe, just maybe, there's some chicanery going around where, you know, there were some bags being dropped and maybe they have some cash in it and maybe that, you know, leads you to making a decision for Wait, your what? college choice. Yeah. But that wasn't allowed. That's I, not I rule. know it's not allowed, but that's it's against the rules. It happened. Wow. It happened. I hate to say it, but a guy by the name of Mike Krzyzewski thrived doing it. Um, no, I'm kidding. Bad guy of the week for me is a man who is on this coast, and he's a man who you may not even know his name. You may not even know that he is the head coach of his program, but you do know the program because you keep seeing top 20 recruiting classes, and you say to yourself, how, Sway? How can this program that continues to lose perennially, from what I what I can see from the outside looking in, continue to get the Pac-12 freshman of the year, a lottery pick, another guy that the Miami Heat find and ends up being good? 
the Stanford Cardinal. Mm. And there's no S on that Cardinal. The Stanford Cardinal, they're led by a man by the name of Jared Hass. And you say to yourself, in fact, if I put both the pictures down of Kenny Payne and Jared Hass, you would say to yourself, well, obviously that is the good guy and that is the bad guy. Of yeah. course. Yeah. N- no. No. No, folks. Wrong. Nay. I say nay. Because Jared Hass, if you know his background, you know this. He played at California. And guess who he played with in that backcourt? A guy by the name of Jason Kidd. And Jason Kidd, obviously, is adored by Nike, beloved by, you know, the grassroots basketball movement, obviously the coach of the Dallas Mavericks right now. Jared has then transferred to Kansas, where he played for one of the greatest recruiters in all of basketball, and I would argue the greatest recruiter, Roy Williams, the man who recruited Michael Jordan. So... Roy Williams recruits Jared Hass. Jared Hass goes to Kansas. Jared Hass is playing alongside the new head coach of the Brooklyn Nets, Jock Vaughn. And they're learning and they're talking about how basketball works and how you get these recruits. And then time elapses, time elapses. Jared Hass goes to North Carolina, recruits a lot of big-name guys. Brandon Wright is one of the names that comes to mind. And Jared, Jared Hass goes to UAB, gets them to the tournament. They upset Iowa State. Everyone's like, hey, Jared Hass, hot name on the block. Jared Hass goes to Stanford. Jared Hass is a little under the radar. I think his title is actually Director of Basketball Operations, and he's the head coach. I don't know what that means, but you know what it says to me? B-A-G, the bag. And yet again, what do they do? They get another top 20 recruiting class, and this time it is featuring the son of Peja Stoyakovich. Andre Stoyakovich, oh, right. the number 17 right. prospect in the 2023 class, is committed to the Cardinal over Oregon, over UCLA, over Texas. And I say to you, Mark Titus, Jared Haas, the bag never stopped. The bag never quit. Harrison Ingram was a guy they brought in last year, Pac-12 freshman of the year, a five-star. The bag never quits. The bag never stops. Before that, Zaire Williams from Sierra Canyon, the five-star lottery pick now with the Grizzlies. The bag never quits. The bag never stops. Jared Haas continues to keep his job. Doesn't matter if you win 16 games, if you keep getting top 20 recruits. And guess who's next on that list, who Jared Haas has locked in on? He's got, he's got eagle eyes on him. Bronny James. No. He's stop, going after stop, Bronny James. Stop. And bag the first bad guy of the week, Jared Hass. And I'm worried. I'm worried about Bronny James. No, no. I, I am officially not, hitting the button. We, we are we could not be <laughs> any less worried. Okay, good. Bronny James is not good. going to Stanford. Okay. I, in fact I talked to him last night. Okay. Told me, I'm you, just you could quote me. I'm all hot and bothered because I'm I, the, the bag has gotten me. I mean, Jared Hass, he he is both incognito, but he is also operating at a high level right now. And I don't know what Stanford recruiting is on, but I do know this. They're they are using the bag and the bag is working. I remember Stoyakovich uh from um the the <laughs> when we thought Kentucky was gonna get ten commits. Yes. We did the, yeah, we wanted we the, the platoon hit power rankings <laughs> for the, uh, the Kentucky recruits. Reed Shepard was, being seven yeah, was yeah. <laughs> egregious. <laughs> uh I so I, I just pulled up my notes from that show. Uh, I had I had Andre's Andre is that, is that where we're going? Yeah, I think Andre Stoyakovich. Yeah. Uh, at number four, his YouTube title was Andre Stoyakovich is elite mm. in, in all caps. Every college in America wants him in all caps. Yeah. Um, and then I watched the video. He he started a uh, it says it started a, it started a back down at the three point line and threw a one hand. So he started backing a dude down. He was at yeah. the three point line and just started backing a guy down and then threw a cross court pass one handed, um, pulling up from very deep. <laughs> I said he shoots from the wrong side of his face. And then the other bullet point I have is competition is absolute dog shit and he's loving it. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> so. <laughs> so there you go. There's your scouting report. Uh, but he was number four out of ten on my him power rankings. Or my the the him potential. Uh, he he has guys. him potential. So, yeah. And and Stanford is now number twenty two overall uh, in the twenty twenty three class. And like I said, Jared Hass is not done. Jared Hass needs this young nucleus of players to come in and be yeah. good. So Bronny it, James isn't going to Stanford. Well, it's not happening. The reason the reason why I brought up Jason Kidd is because Jason Kidd is basically LeBron's mentor. You know, Jason Kidd is the one that got him to buy into USA basketball. They're very close in Nike pockets. Jared Hass, Jason Kidd, Bronny James. You you connect you the dots. Okay, you connect the dots. I, I I have lived most of my life under under the impression that Cal and Stanford are rivals. Mm-hmm. How no. how was that? No, no. How was how was Jason Kidd, the greatest Cal basketball player of all time, going to steer a kid to Stanford? Nike that makes zero sense. Nike that doesn't check out. Nike it literally it, it literally checks out. No, no. quite literally. Stop, <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> 
But there you go, Stanford. I hate this segment. We're canceling. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Jared Hass, though. I mean, in an upset, bad guy of the week. First week of the season. I didn't I mean, think I'd say it. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Um, it, he does continue to, to lay it. it. He's very sneaky about it. That He gets yeah. good recruits. He gets guys that are uh, – um, that are he's he he's a dark horse for like the coach that uh you look up in like eight years from now and he's got like seven guys that are in the NBA yeah and and you're you're, you're looking through rosters and all these guys went to Stanford and you're like that can't be right because I yeah. I watch college basketball there's no mm-hmm. way that Stanford is kind of like a Lorenzo Romar situation yeah that was the Lorenzo Romar move at there's always a Pac-12 was, program that's yeah up to something Lorenzo you know? Romar was that guy forever where Washington was just pumping out NBA players and. They never did anything. And Jared has a program. Jared has is the perfect kind of bad guy too, because he does just enough to keep his job. Like they beat a top five team last year, and then yeah. all of a sudden everyone's like, "That's Stanford's first top five win since yeah. 2007." Look at Jared Hass. And and now he's got 98 program wins since he's been here. That's the most we've had. You know, they have all the mile markers locked in, and then he keeps getting the top 20 recruits. Uh, the, yeah, bad that, guy of the week. A, that's a good pick, bad guy of the week. Yeah. Um, Kyle guy. I have a Kyle guy update. Okay, please. Uh, I searched Kyle guy's name on Twitter. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> so uh, Kyle's playing in Spain. I know that much. Yes. Um, but I was I was wondering how he's doing. I was like I I was trying to find out box mm-hmm. scores. I was trying to read. I found this Tate. He had a uh, the other day in one of his games in Spain. Kyle guy had a had a sick assist. He throws it. He's going in for a layup. A guy's coming to block it. He throws it behind his back to, to the trailer. Or dunks it. I think. Uh, and the the Spanish basketball account tweets out the highlight, right? In Spanish, obviously. Um, my my Spanish. I, I took Spanish in high school. It's been a very long time. Yeah. It's it's so failed, did I failed me at this point in my life. Same. Um. So I I admittedly had to click the translate tweet button. Mm-hmm. I was like, please explain. Which you can't always trust. Yeah. Well, I was gonna read what the tweet translated to English was. Uh, for Kyle Guy's sick assist. This is the Kyle Guy update. The tweet reads this when you hit, when you click the translate tweet button. It says, "This delicatessen from Kyle Guy should be on all the menus of the best restaurants." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means, but I like it. Yeah, I, I, think I like that, it I th- too. And I'm 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 thinking to myself, this might be the segment: is that we go, we find a Kyle Guy highlight, we find the 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 tweet in Spanish, we translate it to English, yeah, and then inform everybody what Kyle Guy, what 2019 most outstanding player. Kyle Guy is up to national champion. Yeah, national champion, most outstanding player. Uh, this delicatessen from Kyle Guy should be on all the menus of all of all the menus of the best restaurants. And, and I agree with that. I agree with that statement. What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? We don't know. My Kyle Guy update. I had one sentence, and I did a very similar thing. Here's what I learned: Kyle Guy is off to a hot start in the Spanish ACB league, averaging over 15 points per game and shooting nearly 44 percent from three. So. Kyle Guy update. He's playing great in Spain. Bring him back to the States. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's great to talk I think about Kyle. Guy. I, I think it's better for the segment if he's not back in the States. I think it's better for yeah. him to. Uh, well, it's better for our translations as well. Yeah, we, we do the It's not translate. as much fun when you understand it. We click the translate tweet more often, but it's also, uh, yeah, it makes us just go down these rabbit holes of European basketball. Mm-hmm. Does that make him. So if he's if he's averaging that much, in, yeah, how, how many points does he have to average in the EuroLeague before. He's um, back. Like the NBA draft, people start saying like, they start foaming at the mouth that he's tearing up the Euro leagues. You know, I think he's got to cha- you know? yeah, change his first name. Yeah, I know. You're absolutely right. He sh- he should he yeah. should do an identity. We should have him on the show and and, and talk this through with him. He I did tweet it out that we were going to bring this segment back, and Kyle reached out and he said he was very excited for it. So I think it's about time we have him back on the show. <laughs> I thought he was mad at us because we were supposed to play in his golf tournament. I know I'm I've had to I'm supposed to play in like three years in a row and I haven't been able to make it work. So I'm always like worried that every time I talk to him, he's going to bring that up. But we need Kyle Guy back in the fold, back in the show, and we need updates on Virginia from Kyle Guy. You know what I mean? It, yeah, that, it feels yeah, more yeah, true yeah. that way. You know, yeah. coming from me, I might be mad at Virginia. Tell us what you're seeing. Yeah. with Virginia, Kyle. What's Key, What's Key Hay Clark up to? I uh. DMs from Kyle Guy are a risky click, dude. Be careful. <laughs> Check to Be you. careful. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Um, what what else? Cal's guy. What yeah, last Cal's one. Guy? Are, are we doing the the Oscar Shibwe update? Is that what Cal's guy is? Yeah. Well, I'll start with his actual guy this week because look, he's in promo mode. This is promo season. This is Calipari. This is very sleight of hand of him. He is 
you look over here, and then I'm doing this over here. He's the prestige right now, and the guy that he has on stage with him is Rob Dillingham of Donda fame, of course. And uh, this week, Rob Dillingham signed his national letter of intent. He is going to join the Kentucky Wildcats. He committed back in June of 2022, um, and basically the 6'1 point guard. He's top 10 in the 2023 class. He had offers from you know Auburn, Carolina, Tennessee. He's playing with overtime elite now. But Cal is like, this is my guy. I'm locked in on Rob Dillingham. He's going to change the game. They're saying he could be the next Iverson, right? They're throwing all kind of stuff I, out. I, I've watched a little Rob Dillingham tape. Mm -hmm. I've grinded the tape. Yeah, what do you um, think? I've watched multiple YouTubes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he, boy, that guy likes to dribble the basketball. Oh, loves it. Oh, he lo like he, if, he cannot play at Bellarmine. Yeah, if he, he was is, at Bellarmine, oh, oh. he would have a really tough time. He is uh, he's NBA ready in that regard. Mm -hmm. like, this man will pound yes. the air out of the basketball. Yes. Um, and yeah, I, I I'm fascinated to watch that unfold at Kentucky because, uh, as we know, college basketball is not the NBA, and sometimes a possession, a 30 second possession where you dribble 19 times, and make zero passes. It's not good. It's not something yeah. that college coaches always love. No, no. Some of them do. Yeah. Penny Hardaway <laughs> doesn't mind it sometimes. <laughs> Bruce Pearl. Bruce Pearl. <laughs> He's, he's all right with it. He can't stop it. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I guess I got to let it happen. John Calipari has been known to allow uh, some of his players do that if you're good enough. And I guess that's what it comes down to is like Robert, D if Robert Dillingham dribbles the ball 19 times and hits a one legged fadeaway step back with what was the Patrick Ewing line? Have you ever shot yeah. that? Have one? you ever shot that shot? Yeah. Um, and he and he's making it. He's making those shots. I think John Calipari is gonna say, "Yeah, go ahead, keep doing it. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, do what you gotta do." Also, Dillingham. One of the notes in his little graphic they put up for the people at home. He is from Hickory, North Carolina, and for the people, Lenore uh, Ryan. Lenore Ryan. Yeah, he is. He is from the home of Lenore Ryan. So as he committed to Kentucky, there was another sh subtle shot at Louisville. Yeah, just bringing up Hickory, North Carolina. So I like that from Cal. Also, Cal. Uh, brought up this week, or he pointed out to BBN. He said, hashtag BBN, make sure, you've tu make sure you're tuned in to SportsCenter all week for an inside look at all caps, your program. So this whole week, SportsCenter, John Calipari is having an inside look at uh, the Big Are we going to get – were there cameras in the, the – Will they show Oscar Sheboy? Yeah, were there cameras in the MRI room when Oscar <laughs> Sheboy was getting his knee looked at? That's all I could were think there? when I saw that. He also, in his November 1st uh, video where he kind of like addressed BBN, you know, that was kind of his yeah. uh, State of the Union, so to speak. He said at the end, and I wanted to bring this up and ask you about it, he said, let's enjoy this ride. And it immediately takes me back to Russell Wilson with Let's Ride. And I think having the mantra or the motto of Let's Ride only leads to bad, bad things. Not bad things, B-A-D things. And uh, I think John Calipari and Cal's guys, they seem to be riding that wave right now. I'm a little concerned. We'll, we'll see, man. Uh, uh, Sheboy D&P versus Howard. Um, yeah. They play tonight, or Friday. I mean, most people probably listen to this show on the uh, on Friday, but uh, they play they play Duquesne Friday. I think Oscar's mm -hmm. not going to play in that game. Then the next one, of I course, think is Michigan State on Tuesday, and that's kind of a you know it's it's a big game in in the sense that it's a game Kentucky could actually lose, but um, at the same time, like I don't I don't think you need to rush him back for that. You're, you're not rushing him back for nine. I mean, the, the the ultimate goal, as they always say, is number nine. So like I'm I'm very fascinated to see how they handle this. I'm gonna I you know. We've talked about it already. Case and, Case and Wallace, it, but Case and Wallace looked good. You know that was like yeah. my big takeaway from their first game. But again, this well, is not what you know we we were expect. We were supposed to be the Oscar show this year. Well, yeah, it, it's just going to be fascinating to watch like how how they handle like yeah keep like you want him to be healthy for the NCAA tournament. That's what matters most. But at yeah. the same time, the longer he goes without playing, the more concern will start to get raised. And so it's a, where where do you draw that line and balance? and the runway for him to get back like right. to get in shape to get into that national player of the year form how long does that take if he's not because they were saying he's not able to do conditioning work because obviously it's a knee issue yeah yeah it's cause for concern but if you want to watch BBN inside uh, the program is going to be on Sports Center I don't know what they're going to show but it'll be fun Michigan State plays Gonzaga Friday yes um, then they play Kentucky and then. Kentucky plays Gonzaga, right? Like mm -hmm. not to. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I like that. That's that's really good for people that have tiny brains like me and and love just comparing scores like transitive that. property. Yeah, the transitive property guys, which I am. I definitely. <laughs> I hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I definitely am. Yeah, that um, much. Yes. That's very nice of those three schools to do that because it can, you know, whichever team goes zero and two, or if there's if they all three go one and one, it, I'm I'm a broken man and trying to mm-hmm. make sense of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but if yeah, one of them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I 100 percent know what you're saying, and I hope I, I hope <laughs> yeah, it it, it 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 plays itself out and the cream rises to the top, so I can. Just use that as a data point for the rest of the season. Yeah, and Kentucky is interesting. They're just a different team than I thought they were going to be. So even when I was watching them play against Howard, it just it was like a weird. Where are all like, yeah. where, where are these familiar faces that I expected to see? And granted, like I said, Case and Wallace stands out. Looks Case great. and Wallace is good. Yeah, they're gonna they're they're gonna be good. But it's just there's there's a lot of unknown, and that's that's fascinating because it's this is not supposed to be an unknown Kentucky team. Like going into the season, yes. this felt like one of the most known Kentucky teams we've exactly. seen in a long time. And uh, and Calipari, he did it again, and, and and the man is marketing his ass off with also giving us nothing. And yeah. and Sports Center is right there by his side. They're like, we'll bring the cameras. We won't ask any questions. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> is that the point? Um. So there you go, Cal's guy, Cal's Rob guy. Dillingham. Rob Dillingham. Yeah. Uh, former NC State commit, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm 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 interested to see. Uh, I, I get a. Where, where's he, he's playing overtime elite. Mm-hmm. They, did they play with those games on TV? I, um, I, I do want to watch more. He he is. Uh, he, they the one the one uh, clips I was seeing was from he was playing like overtime elite. He was playing like in the overtime elite already. Somehow. Already, yeah. So, yeah. I was so confused by that so too. Confused. When they were like he's joining overtime elite, I'm like, how did I already see him in overtime <laughs> yeah. elite? Um, and and he was he was killing it. He was he was very good. He just dribbles a lot. That was those are my notes. I was like, he's awesome. He also dribbles a lot. Yeah. And I this could go poorly, but also every every highlight I'm seeing, he's awesome. So he's also been a pro since he was like 16 at this point. You know what I mean? Like they always talk about like Luca and these Europeans being able to be pros at the age of 16. Like Rob Dillingham has created a new path by going to Donda because no one even knew what Donda was at the time, and he went and did that, and now he's overtime elite. So by the time he gets to Kentucky, you yeah. know he's had like two pro careers, and then he gets to play college, and then yeah. he gets to go pro for real. So. Um, there you go. All right. Well, there you go. There's good guy, bad guy, Kyle guy. We we, we have we have to get Kyle back in the for Kyle. Yeah. Both Kyles. We have to get Kyle guy. Yeah. We without should, Remy Martin, Kyle's guy. We should call Kyle Crichton though and have him. That's, that's what I mean. Like without Remy Martin in the fold anymore, he's officially out of college basketball. We need. Kyle's he could at guy. least text us like his pick. Yeah. Uh, he has no idea. He, he, he yeah. He didn't know the season started. Let's be honest. <laughs> he had no idea. It's okay. But we 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 got we got to uh, I'm we, we 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 did we do this segment all of last year we did it like sparingly I want to say. yeah we got to make this consistent this is fun it's too it's too fun and it's too much of our show and it's also like an easy way to talk about Kenny like you know good guy Kenny Payne it's easy it's one I was one. in I was in uh, New York regrettably uh, the other day and uh, <laughs> um, with regrets from New York <laughs> it's with a heavy heart that I report I was back in. That city, um, and and a guy. First of all, I saw this has nothing to do with anything, but I I saw Nick Wright on the street. And, no way. And yeah, it blew my mind. What did I he? Gonna, I was gonna say something to him, but then I was like, I don't, you know, I I I I, I didn't want to risk like the ego bruise of being like Nick, it's me, Titus. We mm-hmm. worked together at Fox, and he, yeah, and then him going who, and uh, so I just let him go. Could have said something about Mahomes, but it was know? wild. It was uh, it was I'm just walking around New York City, and I was like, I know that face. How, who, who could mistake that face? Yeah, you can't. Um, but then a guy, uh, a guy recognized me, and he goes, "Titus, who's the bad guy of the week?" That was what he said. Oh my god! I, I bring that up just to say that it's on people's minds. This is what people know us for: is they want to know who the good guy and the bad guy are. Tate. So um, we need to we need to make this segment a regular. And I froze. I was like, I don't know. I don't know who the bad guy is. Yeah. Find out on Thursday. <laughs> Tate tells us uh, the bad guy is. I I also enjoyed that that you didn't even know who it was going to be. You had your own bad guy, good guy, yeah. theoretically. In your you know head. what I said to him? I said, "Are you saying bad or bag?" That's <laughs> well, the bad guy, the bad guy, is uh, a guy by the name of Mister K. So maybe we can do that segment every once in a while. Check in on him. Uh, bag guy nominee is Rick Pitino. Did you see uh, Steve Massiello is yeah. now helping of out? Of course, Iowa? of course. Yeah, everything is smooth. Smooth it's all happening. Sailing. It's all happening. Yeah, Rick Pitino. Let's be honest. He watched that Bellerman game, and he just he, was he smiling, just smiling ear to ear. Maybe taking just a shot goes. at Casamigo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm ready for with this. His good. Do you think he was watching with his good friend George Clooney? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Randy Gerber, George Clooney, Rick. Pitino. My good friend George Clooney, who I got tickets to for the uh, 1996 national championship. Uh, he's a one, fan of, one of the greatest days in Camelot history. 
<laughs> he's a fan of a lot of sports. Uh, and uh, Sports? And one of his favorite sports was college basketball, and he's a, he's a Kentuckian, proud Kentuckian. What a terrible Patino voice. Oh, man, I miss uh, Patino. We got to right. get him on the show. Do you think we could? I think we could, yeah. I think we could, too. I think I think we send him enough clips of us saying he's the greatest of all time. I mean, I've interviewed him a couple times. I've looked at that man dead in his heart. I've asked him questions about recruiting. He has no idea who I am. But I, you know, in my heart of hearts, I think we can get him. I'm, I'm just slightly worried that he holds a grudge. Like, no, he, he, I think. He, like some, like, I, I, I don't think that he knows who I am. I think that there might be a world where um, one of his people saw the jokes I was making. And boy, was I making jokes. You were making and, jokes. And, um. You know, I like, like I, I, I feel like th- th- this seems plausible to me that that someone in Rick Pitino's circle has a list, like mm-hmm. Steve Buscemi and, and of course, and yeah. Billy Madison, yes, and he's just writing down all the list of people. Like we, th- this is the the no fly list, mm-hmm. and we will. Kevin not do Keats, any, Kevin yeah. Keats has that list. We will not do any interviews with any of these people, um, and I feel like I might be on that list. And yeah. that doesn't mean Rick Pitino knows me. I just think like one of his people put me on the list. You know what I mean? I think it's we're impossible all, to get off. I think we're all right. I think the only thing that comes back to bite us is if you Google us. I think that picture of us at the Italian restaurant pops <laughs> right, up. Right, right. I think that one. I think that one might hurt us. Just the vis- just the fact that we were. That's why we gotta there. we gotta figure out a way to scrub stuff from the internet. How do you do that? Do you do you? Maybe we just. We, I think we just say enough nice things now, and they it just muddies the waters, right? Yeah, we exactly. Start, yeah, and, and we say it's a fake. That's all you have to do. Just like deep fake. Yeah, fake news. Fake news. Boy, say fake news. <laughs> Uh, all right. Speaking of fakes, let's uh, take a break. Come back. I want to do fraud power rankings. Oh, I can't. Um, wait. There were a lot of nominees, and it was it was very difficult to sort through them all. But um, first, fraud power rankings of the year coming up. First, we're gonna take a break. Can't wait. All right, fraud power rankings. I don't really think I need to explain this segment. I think, I think it kind of uh, <laughs> explains itself with the name, Tate. Uh, I don't. I don't think we got to go through that. So uh, I, I will dive right into it. Um, if unless unless you want to say something at the top. I'm just excited. That's okay. all I have to all say. Right. I'm excited. Let's let's get into it. At number five for the fraud power rankings, first one of the season. Uh, there's a lot that can shake out throughout the season. Just because you're a fraud three days into the season doesn't mean you end the season as a fraud. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't take it personally if you're on this there's list. There's still time. There's still time. But as of right now, you're officially on my bubble. Uh, the TCU Horn Frogs. Oh, no. 34.5-point favorites, Tate, Yeah. against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Playing at home. Pine Bluff has a shot at the buzzer to win. Uh, a good shot. A good look. Um, but that that in and of itself isn't the concern. I mean, it, which that is a concern. I mean, you're, you're, you're opening up a season where you bring back all five starters. The last time we saw TCU playing meaningful basketball was against Arizona. Uh, my, uh, Mike Miles, I believe, is the one who, who gets, goes st- at, at midcourt, is dribbling the ball, gets trapped. Um, you remember. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, they they thought it was a foul. It was was it Dalen Terry that scooped the ball up and dunked at the I, other end? I, I think it was. It doesn't matter. Or was it um, Matherin? I want to say it was Terry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't you yeah. say you say Matherin? I say yeah, Terry. Yeah, that yeah. way one we, of us we'll is cover it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give Matherin all the credit. You know. Yeah, there in go. my head. Um, and uh, and and you know, people were some people were losing their minds saying that there was a foul. Other people were saying, well, wait a second. If we zoom in, Mike Miles actually stepped out of ba- on on the half court mm. line, so it should have been over and back. Seth Davis was like, actually, guys, you don't know over and back rules, and then just like com- continued to double down on, <laughs> yeah, being wrong on his about own. What the over and back yeah, rule is. He's making up rules. And, and you're and like, what? Is- yeah. I was like, this guy ever played basketball? What is happening? I'll never forget that as long as I live. Yeah. Seth just like continuing to double down on like, you're allowed yeah. to step on the line. That and like, Pete Illen are like the two. You're things from last year yeah, I'm like, like, i can't get out of my head i was like is he is is this a bit that's going yeah. anyway um there was from the tcu point of view their season ended in controversy and uh they they felt like arizona was was uh, for my money the best team in college basketball for, throughout last season uh tcu took him to the brink they take him to overtime eddie lampkin was awesome in that game uh they 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 bring back all five starters from from that team um and and there's excitement going into the season that there's never been for TCU basketball yep. ever. This is this Mike is, Miles, Big Twelve preseason player of the year. You said it. Um, and you know that that and so we're excited. That was the last time we saw TCU playing meaningful basketball. Fast forward to the other night, they're playing Arkansas Pine Bluff, thirty four and a half point favorites. They almost lose. Uh, and it's not just that Tate. It's that they went four for twenty one from the three point line. And the reason I'm worried about this: number one, you have to make shots to win at this level. You know yeah, that. You have. To. You know that. If you're going to win the Big Twelve, you have to make <laughs> shots. Best conference in college basketball. Not going to get it done if you're not making shots. 
this was a problem for TCU last year. They were not a great three-point shooting team. They shot 30% from three as a team mm. last year. This is one of the concerns. And one of the ways you talk yourself into TCU this year is you say, these boys got in the gym and they learned how to make shots. That's what you say. You say they, they got out the gun and they were just in there night after night just, just getting shots up. Uh, and, and, and this is what was a concern last year will not be a concern this year because – um, it is it is wild how we can talk ourselves into that. That like get, get, like even even rookies get drafted that can't shoot, and you're just like, well, give them three or four years, and they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll learn how to shoot. Chip England. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you have to say. Two words. Soon People enough, are like, yeah, yeah, they'll be a star. Soon enough, they'll learn how to shoot. Uh, that was that was the hope with TCU was that they were they don't need to be a great three point shooting team. They were they were a decent enough team last year shooting thirty percent from three. Um, but you want them to be if if they're going to shoot thirty percent from three this year. Count me out, Tate. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not buying TCU. They have to. They have to get better at shooting. So not only do they open the season and and lay a stinker against uh, Pine Bluff, but it's concerning for them to go four for 21 from three because I'm I'm worried that they didn't address the issue in the offseason. And it's just basically basically they're just rolling out the exact same team and they're going to be a nine seed again this year. Yeah, and I'm really worried about our guy Eddie Lampkin. In this game, he has two points. He wasn't really, you know, he wasn't the Eddie Lampkin, the magic that we saw in March last year. It seemed like, you know, he just didn't have that spark. And that concerns me because, like you said, we bring back our five starters. We expect them to improve and be better. But what happens if they actually regress? And if you watch this game, I mean, they were down 11 at the half. I mean, it was panic button time. It yeah. was like, wait a second, yeah. TCU's down 11 at the half? So I do want to give them some credit for battling back and actually winning the game. But in general, I, I red flags, I'm concerned. It's red flag. Yeah. yeah, it's red flag time. I don't think that they're the favorite to win the Big 12 or the dark horse to win the Big 12. I think they're more maybe in the fifth, sixth slot of the Big 12 when you look at this team. I think you could have talked me – like. I don't think I don't think there is any path that they're going to win the Big Twelve, but uh, as far as dark, th th you could have talked me into they're still in the hunt with like five Big Twelve games left. Yeah, you know, where uh, if if things break a certain way, maybe they could finish second in the Big Twelve. You know, yeah, yeah they're yeah. a dark horse in that regard. But boy, you have to make shots, and if they're not making shots, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. And, and like, it's no harm. And being an eight nine seed again, you know, I just maybe one of those things where they got a little overrated because of how lo good they looked against Arizona. Yeah, so makes sense. Uh, at number four, fraud power rankings this week. Woj, breaking news. Bra as as first reported, I had the scoop. As first reported on this program, Woj sucks. Woj is is bad. He is uh <laughs> he is um wh what did Kevin Garnett say about Charlie Villanueva? He is cancerous to his team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's what, definitely what Kevin yeah. Garnett said. Um, Woj is cancerous to the sport of basketball. He yeah. uh, not only serves no purpose, is not only not uh, not an asset to basketball. He's he's an active detriment. Uh, and basketball as a, as a as as a sport would be better uh, if he just went away forever. Um, this Boom. man sucks. I can't stress it enough. Uh, the fact that he's number four, not higher, is is a huge upset. Um, but I, I was I was feeling nice. Uh, out of the gate, and I put him at four. Here's why. Tuesday, November 1st, uh, Woj tweets the following. Suspended Celtics coach Ime Udoka has emerged as, a likely, as the likely next Brooklyn Nets head coach, and his hiring could be finalized as soon as the, ne as soon as the next 24 to 48 hours, sources tell the ESPN. Celtics will let him leave for another job. He follows that up with ESPN story on Ime Udoka's imminent hiring in Brooklyn uh, with a link to his story where he basically just – regurgitates his own tweets and mm -hmm. then makes it into a story puts yeah. in a link because but he has to he has to tweet out these links because you, you, you people have to click on them because if they don't then he brings in literally no zero value to yes man so he has to do that just to justify his insane salary that he uh he 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 has because he got so many people fired when he was hired yes in the first place you know everyone remembers yeah um so that was tuesday november 1st eh? that you may is going to be the head coach of the imminent event. imminent it's imminent it's done done, done deal. deal done deal Fast forward to uh, Wednesday, November 9th, which was, uh, I believe, yesterday. Yeah. If my calendar is correct. Checks out. At 12.07 p.m. Eastern, Shams, the uh, the Woj alternative, <laughs> who also I don't I don't uh, – I, I I don't I don't love Shams. I don't love the business he's in, but like he's at least yeah. More don't palatable. don't hate the player, hate the game. You know what I mean? It's like I I don't I don't I don't really I understand what he's doing. He's 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 just in a cesspool, and I you know it is what it is. It's a giant douche turd sandwich situation. <laughs> yes, yes, Shams is the turd sandwich, and I'm, I'm going, going with turd sandwich. I'm going, with, <laughs> I'm going with the turd sandwich. 
Uh, at 12.07 p.m. Eastern, uh, <laughs> Shams tweets, the Brooklyn Nets have named Jacques Vaughn as their head coach. Bang. At 12.08 p.m. Eastern, Woj tweets, the Nets are making Jacques Vaughn their head coach. That's one minute after Shams. Mm. At 12.09 p.m. Eastern, the Brooklyn Nets official Twitter account tweets, the Brooklyn Nets have named Jacques <laughs> Vaughn their head coach as our head coach. Uh, and, and what that does is th- that whole sequence illustrates a couple things to me. Number one, Woj was was late versus Shams. So Shams beats him in the first place by one minute. And so like if that's the game, the game is stupid. But if that is the game, you lose. You lose. You, you lost big time. Number two, the Brooklyn Nets tweeting it one minute after this bozo tweets it underscores the entire problem with, with this in, this industry, quote unquote, if, if you even call it an industry. Uh you you serve no purpose. If Woj does if, if Shams and Woj don't tweet at twelve oh seven and twelve oh eight that Jacques Vaughn's gonna be the head coach, oh my god, we have to wait sixty more seconds to get the news. Thank yeah. God that these guys exist, that they hit send tweet yeah. and all their followers gotta make memes and the replies and you know and, like and, thank God. You guys are doing such a great service. And the basketball. Brooklyn thank Nets so are much. tweeting the actual news. Exactly. Because what we learned from the November first tweet is that Woj does not He's not waiting in the waters of actual news. He's in. He's waiting in the waters of this is of going course, to happen, yes. which is, and then he can get away with it when it doesn't happen because he's like, I was. That's at the time. That's what it was. So I actually was reporting the truth. And you're like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> he's wrong. He's he's wrong. First <laughs> yeah, of all, he's yes. wrong out of the gate. Then when he's right, I'm glad you're doing. I tweeted this dude. yesterday, and then I had like all these like well actually people. So I no, tweeted it. No, I'm dude. Like, I'm, I'll do it. I'll, I, I'm if you're like, a well I'm actually done. person, please. <laughs> Come step into my domain. I will fight the Woj fight until yeah. I take my dying breath. Yeah, this guy I'm sucks. Like, I'm like, I'm uh, uh, he's he's wrong out of the gate and on November first. And, and he never says never backtrack. Never and backtrack. said like I apologize for my my reporting. That the, was wh- wrong. Never, he doesn't even say the winds are blowing differently and the waters are changing, <laughs> like he said for the draft with yeah, Paolo yeah, and yeah. Jabari and, and yeah, all that. Exactly. Uh, so he's wrong out of the gate. Even when he gets it right, he's late versus Shams. Mm-hmm. And then when he gets it right, uh, he's he's basically at the exact same time as the net, like proving once again that you're worthless and you do nothing for this industry. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of it all, as you said, there's there's a belief that. Uh, he wasn't wrong on November 1st when he said Ime Udoka is going to be the Nets coach. What happened was that that was exactly what the Nets wanted to do. Um, they just leaked it so they could then sense take a, take a temperature gauge. Yeah, it's like people, a PR check. Yes, PR check. <laughs> so that doesn't mean Woj was wrong. He was the, the information he had was correct. That's that's what people might say, right? How does that not prove that he's worthless? Like you're yeah. you're supposed to be a journalist that have like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no. So all you're telling me through is that, that you're a puppet. You're a, you're a pawn. You're a puppet. Yeah. That's it. That's your that's yeah. your function in this business. You're a puppet. Yeah. Cool. You're Pinocchio, Sweet, man. Thank you, Geppetto, for telling me what to say Which, and pedal out to the world. I guess it's fine because you and I are both puppets and we'll report anything we hear. Yeah. But like we also say the words that we are puppets. <laughs> you know what I mean? no. And Woj is out there like I run, I you know yeah. like I am I'm a, a big journalist. I'm a big J, and you're not. And you never, You're not. you never come back and say that I was. I I was so confused when Jock Vaughn knew when the Jock Vaughn news came out that there was no like, you know, my bad, my apologies for reporting this was a done deal eight days ago. Right. And no one even follows up on it because everyone's like you said that everyone wants to give the benefit of the doubt because they're like that's just how it works. You if, float these things out or whatever. It's like it doesn't have to work like this. Why? Why have we subscribed? Woj has life? had uh, a a how long has it been now since the Doka original bombshell dropped oh since the original the original story? one where it was like where he's gonna get september spinning. right i mean yeah I've, yeah august september or something like that. since then Woj has had all that time to prove that he is actually a big j and he actually has value. but he alluded to this larger thing and exactly then, and ne- but never followed up on it because he's not an actual journalist he's not a journalist because yeah. he sucks yeah fraud <laughs> uh at number three <laughs> love it at number three on the fraud power rankings Dunkin' Donuts. Oh no! Um, <laughs> Son of a. <laughs> which, <laughs> like, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Do we lose, just lose a sponsor? This is yeah, I know. Are we sponsored by Dunkin'? <laughs> that would be amazing if we cut in and we we're <laughs> we're doing a Dunkin' ad read. Um, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. I know uh, there there might be people listening that think this is just going to be a personal story that like I went to Dunkin' and my coffee was mm-hmm. cold and and that's it. Uh, that's not the case. At number three is Dunkin' Donuts because they, the Providence Friars last season played at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. The uh, Dunk! The Dunk! Dunk! Yeah. Dun, dun. Mm. Um, the Providence Friars won the Big East for the first time in the history of their program. Uh, they were also lucky as hell, and that was the theme. The luck of the Providence. Friars. 
yep. Providence's season all year last year was how lucky they were. Um, and, and there was a belief in some circles that there was something magical about the dunk, as they called it. Uh, there was something magical about that place. Yeah. And it fed into... I mean, it leaked last year in the middle of a game it and it helped them it did. inspire a comeback. Yes. You know, like it was... The arena had some kind of magic It was like the on. Cubs yeah. World Series Game 7, the rain delay that like... Yeah. That bought the Cubs time to unclench mm-hmm. their buttholes. Mm-hmm. That was what the leak was for, yeah. for, for Providence. Uh, anyway... The it turns out so the coming into this season, Providence changed the name of the the arena. It is no longer the Dunk. It is now the Amp, is what they're calling it. They had Amica Mutual Pavilion or something. <laughs> um, and there was a concern that maybe changing the name, it's same arena, different name, but it doesn't roll off the tongue. The Dunk is yeah. it, the the Dunk is an awesome name. The Amp, I don't know, it sounds like a music venue, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so. There was there was fear. Is this going to do anything to 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 take away from Providence's mojo that they have playing at home? The answer is no. The answer is that Dunkin' Donuts had zero. The 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 magic was not derived from the yeah. dunk, as it turns out. It was it was derived from the actual building. So uh, Dunkin' Donuts did nothing for Providence because Providence opens up the season against Ryder. They are down ten at halftime. They are down thirteen at one point in the first half. Um, they go on to win 66 to 65 because a dude on Ryder, the Fell final down. possession, trips over his own feet. Yeah, it was, I've never seen anything like it. I was watching that game trips live. Trips over his own feet. Our, on boy, the final jo- our boy John Fanta is on the call. And John Fanta is literally like, he. You, you mentioned Dunkin' Donuts being a fraud. John Fanta replaced the dunk with the amp. Seamlessly. seamlessly yeah like it, it, like it never happened exactly like i yeah. feel like i've been watching john fanta at the amp for 10 years you know what i mean so like that automatically i was like the dunk is dead because the amp is on and then the fact that this man tripped over his own feet and turned the ball over and then providence is like boom baby we did it again it, it one it warmed my heart but it also it, it confirmed everything you're saying no Dunkin i mean like by, by march we're gonna be talking about how the amp is luck been, lucky for yeah for, been 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 lucky for this years. is year number two that the amp has has been yeah. lucky for providence this is so, not year zero yeah. for the amp this is year 10 already everybody's gonna forget about the dunk that's what agreed that's where we're headed so uh number three is dunkin donuts <laughs> Apologies again if, if you are a sponsor. I don't think I think we're in the clear. I think we're in the clear. I think uh, I think we're in the clear. Uh, at number two, Tate, Division three basketball. <laughs> <laughs> when I say Division three basketball, what do you think of Duncan Robinson? Of course, yeah, of course, Who, of course, immediately. Of course. It's Duncan Robinson. That's it, <laughs> and and it's a good thing. It's like it's like Division three <laughs> produces guys who can go on to make millions and millions of dollars yes. in the NBA and play ninety one. Yeah, the effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's what Division Three basketball is. If you if you play Division, you know how many Division Three programs when Duncan blew up uh, after he came on our show. Uh, <laughs> no one knew who he was after he texted me. Should I is, should I put out the text the, as a put, reminder? Put the text out. Screenshot the text and send it out again. <laughs> um, Duncan blows up. You know how many Division Three coaches around the country were using that story as like, come play for us. Yeah, you'll kill it. You can go to Michigan, then you can have a great career. In the go NBA. to a Final Four. Pat Riley will give you a chance. Yeah. No other yeah. GM or president will give you a chance. Pat Riley will. We know that. We know that. Um, Facts. This is the path. Come to Division Three. You can do it, guys. Mm-hmm. This is this is how you do it. And ever since Duncan uh, exploded to to you know to the, to have the career he's having, and um, he's still having a great career. Shut up, haters. Um, I I I've always thought of Division Three as like a, that. Maybe better better than Division Two, honestly. Yeah. Like if you told me Division, it, it was backwards in my mind. It's Division One, Division Three, then Division Two. That's how I ranked. The yeah, division. same, same. Because those are Duncan. my power rankings. Yeah, those are my division <laughs> power rankings. Uh, all of that has changed after two games on opening night tape. Bryant beats Thomas College, one hundred and forty-seven to thirty-nine. Mm-hmm. Jared Grasso, the head coach of Bryant, says he regrets nothing in the post game. By the way, respect. Uh, he was asked about running up the score. He said he stopped pressing with ten to twelve minutes left. So like, you know, <laughs> I'd let like my... what? What else can I do with twelve minutes at the under tw- <laughs> at the under twelve timeout? Bryant was up on Thomas one hundred and seven to twenty nine, and that's when he let his foot off the gas. And he's like, "What do you mean I ran up the score? Mm-hmm. We were only up one hundred and seven to twenty nine." And I, I I looked at the I looked at the clock. I looked at the score. I looked at my algorithm, and I said, <laughs> "All right, no, call it, call off the dogs." <laughs> If if uh, Jawan Howard was the coach at Thomas, how hard does he does he strike Jerry Grasso in the post game? Ooh, good question. That's that's a double strike. I yeah, think he strikes with I, I the think right, it's both hands. Then the left. Yeah. Um, but Thomas Division Three school loses by a hundred and eight to Bryant. Embarrassing. Embar- mm. Completely embarrassing. Uh, 
Thomas Bryant, by the way. I'm, I'm now just looking at that. The Indiana legend. Yeah, I love Thomas Indiana, Bryant. Indiana yeah. legend Thomas Bryant. Yeah. That's a, those are the two two teams that were playing. Uh, <laughs> so Thomas loses by 108. Meanwhile, at James Madison, a, a school called Valley Forge, Tate, lost by a final score of 123 to 38. They were down 72 to 11 at the half. Uh, it was one of the saddest. I, I watched a few clips of because yeah. I, I was curious. I was like, how the hell? Because my mind goes back to like my playing days, and I'm like, I could, could I have given these guys on Valley Forge buckets? The answer is yes. The answer is definitively yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what's happened to Division Three basketball, but but these teams stink, and 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 losing by, I mean, Thomas lost by 108. Uh, Valley Forge almost lost by 100. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. That's not good. Yeah. That's not good. And my respect for Division Three has never been lower. And Valley Forge, like, is that the military base? You know, or like, what? What is? I don't even. I don't James th- Madden versus Valley Forge is funny. Yeah, like, hearing that, it's like, exactly. I'm it's like, not- what? What is this? Also, I saw Valley Forge plays Maryland on November 12th, so there's a chance transitive. I, tran- us transitive guys are gonna are gonna. I'll yeah. say this: if they do, the if they lose by a hundred, they should take a picture in the locker room <laughs> with the hundred Wilt Chamberlain sign after the fact. You know what I mean? You might as well embrace it. Um, and then also uh, Hartford moving from D1 to D3, like I said earlier, uh, and, and you lost your coach because of it. It's a, it's a clown show at Hartford, honestly. Hartford made the tournament in 2021. They decided they want to go to D3. I, no, nothing disgusts me more than colleges that don't prioritize athletics. It's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. It really is. It's, it's like the, the Ivy League schools are, are – It's also like Hartford. We get it. You watch Duncan Robinson in the bubble, and you're like, we should go D3. Yeah. They, they, they were trying to pull one over on everybody. And then also in his letter, they, they said there were a lot of inaccuracies in his letter that the coach. Dude, wrote. yeah, did you, can we talk about that for a second? Because the coach, he, he he writes the letter and he's like, "We didn't have a trainer. They, yeah. they did a scrimmage against Dartmouth." Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, "We we didn't get it. We didn't have a trainer. I, I'm worried about the health and well being of our guys." And Hartford, as a school, said, "Yeah, we did because we talked to Dartmouth and they had a trainer and we figured that was good." Yeah. They were like, just in case they had, they were like, thank God. The other how was that? How was that? Your aunt? Like, that doesn't yeah. make you look good. No, not at all. But in their mind, they were like, we had, we had it handled. And if you're the Dartmouth trainer, like how you're like, what the hell? Like, you're like, I'm, I'm not, not dealing with yeah, this. Not, this is my job. Yeah. You pay me double, bitch. Like I'm not <laughs> Get on the clock for you. <laughs> Can you yeah, imagine? I know. It's um, it's honestly shocking. So D3 basketball, get it together. Clean up your act. It's a, uh, and, and, and D3, I'll say, man, like I was, I had circled D3 as a, as a possible, um, a skate pod, you know, like if 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 this the civilization we build of college basketball crumbles as conference realignment and, and yeah. you know the 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 greed is so out of control, like where can we go, Tay? Where can we turn? We've talked about this in the off season. Like where do we turn when the greed just gets to a point where you look at at Division One and you say this is professional basketball, and I don't want it to be professional basketball. I want it. Where's the where my college basketball gone? Yeah, I had Division Three lined up as as the answer. But you're losing by a hundred. Get it together, man. Get it together. Like figure figure it out. Yeah. We or or it bring out. in Duncan Robinson and let or bring him Duncan back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and let him go off. Sign Duncan to a name image likeness deal <laughs> yeah, to go back to <laughs> was it Williams College? Is that Yeah, I think Williams yeah. College. Yeah. Uh so division two or division three, number two on the fraud power rankings. And at number one on my fraud power rankings this week, Red Panda. Oh man. The halftime act yeah. that uh wow. what happened? I think a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, the, of course. The woman who rides a very tall unicycle. Um and then she for a little while and she says hi to everybody. <laughs> and then she starts riding it with one foot back and forth. Yeah. As with her other foot, she flips bowls. Bowls, yep. On to her head. Mm-hmm. And the crowd goes wild. I mean, right. And this is an act that we have seen across college basketball half times. For a decade plus now, I want to say. Yeah, I mean, so mu- so many people have seen Red Panda at different halftimes that there were questions as to, are there multiple Red Pandas? Yes. You know what I mean? That's how many halftime shows she was doing. If I remember right, she had her unicycle confiscated at a San Francisco airport once upon a time, and it was a mini crisis, and we talked about it on the show. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and Vaguely so, remember. Okay, so Red Panda, I was at Hinkle Fieldhouse on Monday night. Uh, for for Butler's opening game against New Orleans, Red Panda was a halftime act. No way! And they announced Red Panda at halftime. Nobody knew she was coming. Nobody. It was it was a surprise. And and they announced Red Panda. The place goes crazy. <laughs> she starts doing the bowl act. Coach Coach Mata's like, I gotta have Red Panda for my first game. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. I'm uh, 
I'm thinking to myself, did, uh, this is great. I haven't seen Red Panda in a few years. I don't think I've seen her since the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. So I'm thinking to myself, I, w- I wonder if it's the Red Panda we know and love, or did yeah. she did she mix her act up a little bit? Like maybe she's going to set the bulls on fire. <laughs> maybe she's got like a dog. I feel yeah. like a dog would be good to mix mm, into the act somehow. Yeah. I don't know how. You got to like, evolve as a performer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, She comes out, has not added anything, has, has added nothing to her game. She's Ben Simmons. She's like, mm. it's it's the exact same. You're saying she's regressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like we all, we're all looking at you thinking, like, are you going to add something in the offseason? Yeah. The answer is no. Exact same act. But that's okay because the thing about playing at college is, is you get new students every year. So you get the, the student section. The Butler student section is going bananas. And yeah. I lock in. There, there's this one girl uh, sitting behind the one of the baskets in the at the Butler student section. Um I, I identified immediately because Red Panda does the first bowl flip and this girl like looked like she was going to faint. Like she's never seen anything <laughs> before in her life. And I was laughing so hard. She's got her hands on her head. Like, Oh my God, what have I just seen? You know? Um, so I was watching, I, I, as, as she would do the bowls, I'm like watching this, this girl looked like she had to be a freshman, you know, like the first yeah, time yeah, I ever yeah. seen Red Panda and, yeah. and she's, she's going crazy. Um, so it's kind of cool. So like, I'm, I'm sort of like living through, the, these students that have never seen the act before, you know, and I'm like, all right, this is kind of played out to me, but like, at least the students are loving it. Uh, let's see what happens. It maybe red Panda can, can, can nail the act. The place will go crazy. She starts going, she does like the, what does she do? Like two bowls to start. And then she does three, four five, something like that. So she, she, she hits the first couple. There's a buzz in the crowd. Tate. Yeah. People, people are, are like, yeah, she's got it. This is, this is, this is, it's happening. Yeah. Oh my God. It's happening. Uh, some of the students are standing up now. Mm-hmm. Some of the some of the fans that have seen it's it like before. watching Michael or something. Yeah. Some of the fans have seen it before, but they're like at the same time. Damn it, she did it know. again. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, she, you know. I've I've seen Paul McCartney play twenty eight concerts. At mm-hmm. concert twenty nine, I'm still on my feet. Yeah. When he plays Let It Be. You yeah. Know? Like I'm still on my feet belting mm-hmm. it out with him. Mm-hmm. Um so that's what they're doing. And and there's a buzz growing. She gets to four bowls. She's stacking four bowls, and 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 I'm I'm looking back at this this girl in the crowd, and like as Red Panda's putting the bowls on, she gets she puts bowl number four, and the girl's like, oh my no, God. she's like no way, she can't do she's it, like, she can't, can't do no four. way, no way, it's four. Red Panda does her like bob with her foot because she puts it on her her on her leg, and then she does like the one, mm-hmm. two, mm-hmm. three, and here we go, you know. So she's doing the bob, flips it up. She thinks no one sees it. I see it. I see you, Red Panda. Catches it with her right hand on her head, like steers the bowls into her head with her right hand it was it was the hand of god she hands of god's it it was it was a diego yeah. maradona hand yeah. of god situation yeah. uh catches all the bowls but like pushes them in the place goes bananas i'm looking around like did anybody see the right hand <laughs> am i the only one that saw the right hand yeah uh no one else saw the right hand the prestige the, the, this is the sleight of hand yes yes so i'm like <laughs> red panda <laughs> You slick son of a bitch. You <laughs> yeah, did it again. Yeah. Like, you know, so, uh, so that happens and I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be the guy that's like ruining the act and telling everybody that I saw the ace up the sleeve or, you know, yeah. it's like if, if, you know, if, if these simple minded folks want to, want to believe that she's magic, then fine. I'll let you continue to believe it. But I saw what I saw. So she goes to five bowls. She's feeling herself a little too much. She, she hears the crowd pop. And, and if, it, if I was Red Panda in that moment, I'd be like, I'm a fraud. I use my hand. Like, I got I to gotta say thank you. And yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just get out of here. She's feeling herself too much, Dave. Place is going D- crazy. Dare I say Icarus. Yeah. Icarus. <laughs> we have an Icarus situation. <laughs> Does five bowls. She's lining up the five bowls. Oh, man. She's like, watch this, folks. No. If, you, if you like the four, you're going to love the five. I, I'm worried. Flips the five up. Like, four of the five fall and, and are bouncing around on the, on the floor. But the place is the place is like they let it slide. They let it slide. They're not mad. They're like, oh, because we just saw four. We just saw four. We yeah. know you can do it. Yeah. So now there's now people are starting to get on their feet and they're like, do it. Give it. Give us another go. You know. Instead of saying, and I'm I'm yelling in the crowd. I'm like, you're a fraud. Yeah. Call it quits, Red Panda. Um, the place gets on their feet and they're like, let's will her to you know, to to victory. Let's. It's like an injured athlete <laughs> or something. Like we can cheer loud enough yeah. and make her yeah. catch it. So she's like, okay, let's run it back. She looks up at the clock. There's still nine minutes left at halftime. She's like, let's do it again. Locks it up for five more. One, two, three, same thing. Falls to the ground. At this point, if you're Red Panda, you have to say. I can't do five. Can't do five. I'm not a five. Yeah. But you're not Red Panda. Because Red Panda goes, run it back. Stacks it again. One, two, three. Falls to the ground. Run it back. She does it four times, Tate. Fails all four times. Wow. 
And then it's like a Kenny Powers level breakdown, dude. And then bows and then waves to everybody and, and walks off. And I'm like, this is this is Willie this is Willie Mays on the Mets that I'm witnessing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the Red Panda thing forever. She never she never dropped anything. She's dropping everything now. Mm. Sell your Red Panda stock. Red Panda's on the bubble, dude. She's not making the tournament this year. She's not. Yeah. She's not. What, uh-huh. Jim? You're heartbroken by this? It reminds me of, like, Nate Robinson in the dunk contest. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it was. It's like 13 tries. That's what it was. Man. Yeah. Birdman, yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, sad. You're like, it's just that, get off the court. Dude, yeah. That was exactly the get vibe. Get the hell off the court. What did, what, did the, what did that girl do, the freshman girl? Was she, just she still heart- gave she, her a standing up. Oh, she did? Yeah, yeah. she still gave her because yeah, That's even sadder. I know. Yeah, it'd be great right. if she was just like heartbroken. So, anyway, Red Panda, just I'm, I'm warning all the... If, if you're at a college basketball game this year and Red Panda is the halftime act, yeah, it might be a good time to go get... And, and you're someone who loves Red Panda, it might be a good time to leave and go get concessions yeah. or use the restroom. You don't want to see Elvis like this. You don't want to see Fat Elvis. <laughs> Folks, Fat Elvis. <laughs> a, he's a different animal. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Red Panda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like Red Panda. <laughs> and I like Red Panda. <laughs> <laughs> Just ended her career. Uh, uh, speaking of shout outs, let's let's wrap this thing up. Let's do some shout outs. Oh, uh, man. I want to shout out, uh, one, you and uh, and all of Butler basketball and all the Thad Mata army. Because uh, from the outside looking in, you know, shout out to Greg Oden, who is our third co-host. Mm-hmm. People forget. Uh, shout out to even our boy John Diebler. But most importantly, shout out to Thad Mata because uh, I watched that Butler game. The juice is in the building. The juice is there, dude. And uh, Manny Bates, former NC State guy, yeah. guy I've seen play a lot, looked great in that game. So, I, I mean, obviously you should do your own separate shout-out. But just from the outside well, no, looking I'll, in, shout-out to Thad Mata I'll and give the you, Army. I'll, Butler's back. I'll give you the report. The game sold out. It was not packed. There there were a few people that had tickets that didn't make it. But uh, it was there, there was a buzz in the arena. People Looked were like excited. It. Um the the Mata contingent was very strong. It was, it was emotional. Uh, I didn't tell them I was coming. Um, Evan Turner was there. He did not tell them he was coming. Love that. Will Buford was there. He did not tell them anybody that he was coming. Um, when Mike Bar- Conley, not there. Mike Conley, not there. Mm. Bad teammate. No, no. <laughs> Mike Conley, literally the greatest teammate ever. <laughs> playing on the ever. jazz. He's like yeah. playing in the game yeah. himself. <laughs> greatest human being of all time. Bad teammate, though. <laughs> um, uh, when 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 Coach Mata's wife saw us, she started crying. Oh, A man. lot of the family said, like, they, it was – it was emotional for uh, a lot of reasons, but uh, what got me was they they did like this pa- this video thing. Um, it wasn't even for Coach Mata; it was just for like this season of Butler basketball, like the hype video before the game starts, you know. And uh, they did like a uh, sometimes to go forward, you have to go back type. Oh, I love that! Where they're showing Coach from his first stint at Butler twenty years ago. Yeah, and then it like fades to him now coaching like the exhibition game, you know, last week. That gave me chills, yeah. That got that got me. Well, like, that's it, yeah. That's the coolest part about Coach Mata going back to Butler is that. And I will say, if I'm Brad Stevens, I'm so jealous. Like he he stole Brad Stevens' game plan. You know, Brad Stevens probably in the back of his mind, even though he acts like a masshole now, he's always been like, I could go back to Butler. And Thad Mata said, "Gotcha, I'm back." I'm glad you brought Brad up because uh, so I'm I'm watching the game with with I'm sitting next to Evan watching the game. Yeah. Um, and Evan takes a picture of both of us, sends it to Brad. And I, you're, you're a former coach. I promise. I, I know I've said on the show I was not going to use Evan for, <laughs> Evan for content anymore. But you brought it up. So I take full responsibility, but this is your fault. No, it's my fault. Um, he sends it to Brad. And uh, Brad replies, like, almost immediately. He goes, uh, tell Marcus a hello. Nice. And um, I, I, I'm happy that you guys will get to experience your first W in Hinkle, is what he says. Wow. Like a immediately, shot. a shot. A shot, because we, because Evan and I were both zero and two. We played Butler mm-hmm. twice when we were at house. Because of the dead spots. Yeah, the dead spots, the refs. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. sun coming in the windows. Uh, talk. To, Villanova fans listening know what I'm talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, of course. It's it's, um, but the fact that that man knew that we were both zero and two off the top of his head, means his heart's still there. Dude, that's what it says to me. It says to me that he's a Butler bulldog for life. It says to me that he's like a pervert, dude. Like you remember that? <laughs> that's sick. That's twisted, dude. That's disgusting. <laughs> Like if you ask me what Robbie Hummel's record was in yeah. the Schottenstein Center, I don't know. I think uh, he beat us once, maybe twice. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But Brad got that off the dome, dude. That yeah. like Evan can just text him and he's like, "Yeah, you guys both, you guys lost twice. I mm-hmm. remember, and you never won here." Yeah, like, dude. 
Honestly, it makes me like Brad. <laughs> it, it, it's it, like that's the best thing I've heard about Brad Stevens in years. That's some Jerry Lucas. Shit. I think Jerry Lucas was the guy. Or Pat Riley. Said. Like that's that's some uh, yeah. Like you said, it's sick and was twisted. It Jerry, Jerry Lucas is the guy that used to. I, I think they said could uh, rattle off everybody's stat. Like at you know the, the under eight timeout in the yeah. second half, he would know what every single player has scored, what, how many fouls they have, all that kind of stuff. That's what that reminded me of. But um, <laughs> no, Butler game was awesome, and the juice is back, and and uh, it was it was really cool, man. It really was, and I I gave I gave Coach Mata a shout out on the last show before I went to the game, and so I, I won't belabor the point, but uh, I don't know. It, it it means a lot to me, and those are my people. And uh, no, it's great. Back. It's great from the outside looking in, and uh, I think it's great for college basketball. Even you know, I had people reaching out to me that were Carolina people, you know, yeah. that worked for the Carolina team. They're like, it's so great to see Thad Mata back coaching. I think so. I think Butler's not bad, by the way. I, th- like, I'm, I not, I'm, not, I'm not ready to say they're going to make the tournament for sure, but like that's that's the most athletic Butler team I've ever seen. They were they got incredible. some juice. Yeah, that's what I mean. They can't shoot. They got to figure that out. That's all right. John told me they, throw it inside. John told me they uh, make shots in practice. He's like he, he goes. <laughs> jo- John said this. He goes. Uh, he goes. This team reminds me of my freshman year at Ohio State when when John shot 29. percent He's like uh-huh. they're killing it in practice. They yeah. just can't shoot in games. Eventually, it's going to translate. <laughs> You're like John. <laughs> I don't need to hear that. Uh, the, which is what everyone said about John all throughout his freshman year. When he's like breaking every shot, they're like, he's great in practice, yeah. though. You can't miss to, in practice. Miss um, so, yeah, Butler, Butler is it – was, it was good to be back in Hinkle and um, fired up for that. Uh, speaking of speaking of Butler, the Big East is undefeated. So, shout Ooh. out to the Big East. Shout out to the Big 11 Ten. 11-0, right? Big Ten is 14-0, Tate. So oh, shout out wow. To, you won't hear the haters talk about that, though. I, I didn't know that. Big East and Big Ten, only undefeated conferences, I think. In college basketball. Shout out Florida State losing to Stetson. Yeah. You know, that was good. That was good for the conference. Louisville losing to Bellarmine. So ACC's on fire to start the year. That's great. Um, I have one more shout out, and I actually got Clarence to uh shout to to do this shout out on the drive in. Wow. Um I'm shouting out my father who uh I I uh so I I I, I didn't prepare my notes as well as I should have to, to say this, but uh, Dad comes on the show all the time, and we're gonna have him on at some point this season to offer his thoughts on whatever bandwagon team. Maybe he's gonna ditch Belmont and join a. Bellerman does sound like a team that he would love. Absolutely. Um, my dad was supposed to go to the Butler game, Tate. Uh, he 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 was fired up to to be in attendance. He was not there because uh, we had to rush him to the emergency. I was home visiting. Um, we had to rush him to the emergency room because he lacerated his kidney. Yeah, a grade terrible. five kidney laceration. Mm. <laughs> um, he uh, he did it, <laughs> and I wanted I wanted him to come on the show to talk about it because uh, I I I wanted him to push back on what I'm about to say because uh, it's kind of funny. But uh, he did it playing pickleball. We were playing. I I didn't tell you this part. We were playing pickleball. Um, it was two on two. It was it was me and, and Allison versus uh, my mom and dad because pickleball. I played pickleball one time and it was yeah. an old people game. Yeah, like you don't really move around that much. Yeah. So we 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 thought like young versus old wouldn't matter. It's more like skill versus not skill. And my mom and dad live in this little uh, community that has like a pickleball court. So they're right? playing. They're, they're yeah, playing yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom's definitely playing all the time. Um, Bet your mom's good. So we're we're playing and uh, I drop a shot in. Like I I see my parents are are playing back and I just I like bloop a little shot in right over the net and my dad goes to get it and when he like goes to push back like like he I don't know how to explain it but like he his his back foot to like push off to like go forward slips he falls and he 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 skins up his knee and like hits his hand and all that it's like it's more of like an ego bruise than anything else for yeah, him. yeah yeah he's he, you know and he's like he's like that's embarrassing that I just fell like going after a pickleball thing whatever um his, his knees like skinned up a little bit what but uh he gets up, he's laughing, we're all laughing at him, and, and everything's happening. He says, Let, let's keep playing. We keep playing for another 30 minutes. Everything's fine. We go back to the house. He makes himself a sandwich. He, we're watching football. He's sitting on the couch. All of a sudden, his back starts hurting. And he's like, I think I hurt my – and I was like, did you throw it out, like, when you fell? Or yeah, something? yeah, and he's yeah. Like, I don't, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was like, well, why don't we put your feet – like, put your feet up and just relax, whatever. So he puts his feet up. All of a sudden, it like, the pain gets worse and worse. He's, he's like, losing his mind that – um that that uh you know that that he he he's never I've never seen a person in pain like he was in ever in, um sorry uh so so he's 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 going crazy like how how much pain there is he says he's got to throw up all this stuff I was like should we take you to the hospital he's like yeah I think we might need to and I'm sure your dad's the same way 
when, when guys like that say, take me to the hospital. You're like, like wow. Yeah, you're this like, must wow. Be bad. Yeah, this yeah. must be really bad. So we rushed him to the ER. Long story short, uh, he's getting out of the hospital today. He's been in the hospital for uh, four or five days now. Um, he, they did not have to have surgery. They thought they were going to take it out. He, I, I literally, as I was driving in today, I found out he's going to, he's clear. He's fine. He's going to go home. He's got to take it easy for like eight weeks. Um, but I wanted to shout him out because, uh, my dad was, was shooter from Hoosiers watching the Butler game, just like <laughs> in the hospital bed, <laughs> he's like screaming for, for yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, Gary Bertier, yeah, remember the yeah, Titans. Gary <laughs> he's like yelling at the nurse to get out of there. <laughs> and uh uh he ultimately he's gonna be okay they didn't have to do surgery they, they were just monitoring it they said it can kind of like heal itself he's got to take it easy for like eight weeks um and and everything's gonna be fine he found out one doctor at one point uh, of course my dad's in Indi he lives in indianapolis so uh, at one point a doctor pointed out that andrew luck had this happen when he was on the colts nice so my dad went from being like super embarrassed that he he got seriously had to get rushed to the emergency room because of pickleball so then now the narrative is that only the most elite athletes. Yeah. He's like, look, this happened to me and sports. Andrew Luck. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I want to shout out my dad. He's, he's got a clean bill of health and uh, he'll, he'll be on the program at some point this season. But uh, I don't know. There, there are people that listed it. it it's I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's too much navel gazing to uh, to to share that with the listeners. But I don't know. He's, he's a character on the show. So yeah, no, it, I just wanted people to know he's he's I'm happy to hear he's, he's okay. on Twitter. Send him a send him a message if you want, yeah. if you're so inclined. We're thinking of we're him. thinking of him. He'll soon. Yeah. Also send him some bandwagon teams that you like. He loves yeah. that. Bellerman. Bellerman's a good one. <laughs> Tweet my father and tell him teams he would he would like to watch because um yeah. His, his only request, I, I asked him what uh what do you want? Like, you know, what what's the message we want to send? What's the whatever he said. All I'm asking and as as I'm healing, is for Jeff Saturday to open the game on Sat on Sunday with eight consecutive quarterbacks. <laughs> it's like I feel like that would be a great nod <laughs> to the best That's football coach in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, no, he didn't say that. I'm kidding. Honestly, there's a chance that Jeff Saturday could do something like that. I can't believe that happened, but it's great. It's great yeah, for the show. So uh, love to hear that. For he's going to kill me that I that I told everybody it was it was from pickleball, but uh, that's. Honestly, it's respect that he went all out. You know what I mean? Like he was like, I I'm trying to make a play. That's what you get for raising your son to be a smartass. You know? Yeah. Like, this is gonna come back to bite you. And uh, <laughs> I was feeling really guilty though, man. He was in, he was in serious serious pain. We thought he was good. We, we we honestly thought he was gonna lose the kidney because they told us it was a grade five and like yeah, that's out of five. And um, we thought he's gonna have to lose his kidney to. Um, and I'm just sitting there thinking like, damn, dude, like. Yeah, and you might have had to do a transplant. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, like it could have been a little, yeah. But then also I was like, dude, that, that's a that's a pretty sick shot, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, You're like, Dad, that was like Federer level drop shot, right? <laughs> Did Roger Federer ever send anybody? He's like getting pushed back. You're like, Dad, that was pretty cool. It was a pretty good shot though, right? Pretty good shot. Now I'm thinking like I might be a I might be great at pickleball, dude. Like I'm sending people to the emergency. It's a big, it's a big sport right now. A lot of people are buying I, teams. I found out my dad though had never really played. I it was my mom plays. I thought my dad had been playing. He doesn't really play. He said that was the first time he played. So he was like going out there trying to, yeah, he he was just trying to find. Dude, he play. lost. That's got to be the worst pickleball career of all time. He went. We played three games. He went zero and three, blew out his kidney. Yeah, <laughs> had to go to the ER. Yeah, and now he's like, I'm never playing pickleball again. I'm like, and, that's and it, and it kind of hurts the whole propaganda behind pickleball. Like it's a safe sport <laughs> know, that everyone can play. You know what I mean? That's what all the nurses and doctors are saying. <laughs> They're like, you're you're doing what? <laughs> yeah. Like, They're like, not tennis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you sure you weren't playing tennis? Who's had a worse start to their career? Kenny Payne, Coach Louisville, or my father playing pickleball? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like your father is going to bounce back, though. I don't, I'm worried about Kenny Payne. Uh, all right. I'll shut up about that. Um, that's it. That, I, I wanted to give him a shout out that because he's getting out of the hospital. It's touch and go there for a while. and uh, Glad yeah, It was okay. never life threatening. He keeps saying that I saved his life because I rushed him to the emergency room, and I'm not going to stop him from saying that. Yeah. You know, if you want to call me a hero, I will let you. Okay. But I don't, I don't think it was. I, don't, I think it was. I <laughs> but I'm just happy he's okay. He's fine. We, he's we need fine. Coach Titus back on the show because, look, we got the Indiana game coming up in not too long here, and I need Coach Titus 100%. I need he's him on, ready to gonna go. He's going to be on the men, but he's going to – the good news is he's going to have his feet – he's just going to be laying around a lot, so he's going to be watching a lot of basketball. Well, he's gonna have a lot of takes. He's gonna have a lot of takes. He's gonna have a lot of takes. So, uh, all right, is that it, Jim? You got a shout out? No, that's it. Shout out your dad. That's it. Yeah, shout out to Coach Titus. Love that. Good way to do it. Shout yeah. out Brownsburg football playing uh, Cathedral tomorrow. Still alive. All in, right, in the in the tournament. We're in the final eight, Tate. Woo! Fingers crossed. Final eight. Elite eight. We're in the elite eight. <laughs> Dogs are trying to go to the final Let's four. Let's go to the final four. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. <laughs> yeah. Play your heart out, boys. Play your heart out. Just play your heart out. Go Brownsburg. Go Bulldogs. Uh, all right, that's the show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys. Uh, everybody have a good weekend. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks.